So we talked about this yo-yo a lot. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'm going to beat a dead horse because to me, this is extraordinarily important. Words mean things, yo-yo. I talked about this with Jill earlier. She says, do you want to talk about this again? I said, yes, because it's important to me. I've been talking about this for years. We speak about this all the time. And today, the Biden administration is officially urging officials to use more inclusive term for immigrants, including replacing the word alien in the Biden administration, the Department of Homeland Security, with the Department of Justice, with Immigration and Customs Enforcement, they are no longer going to be using the word alien. And they are going to instead be calling somebody a non-citizen. To me, I've been saying this forever. You call somebody yeah. an alien, it sounds like they come from another world. It sounds like they're scary. When you watch movies and aliens, aliens are rarely nice people. Aliens are usually mean creatures who are not really even human that come from another part of the universe to come and overtake Earth. And that's what we call people from other countries. So, you know, those words sink into our political and social fabric, makes people suspicious of foreigners. It's just extraordinarily negative. I'm so happy to see that they're not gonna be using the word alien anymore. And the Biden administration is gonna start calling people non-citizens. Now, you know, even the Trump administration says here in my notes referred to unauthorized immigrants as illegal aliens. And it was really, you know, describing people like they were making an invasion, like it was alien invasion into the United States of America, which it really isn't. And they're also going to no longer use the word illegal. Most people who are here without status are not illegal. It's, and when you hear the word illegal, yo-yo, it seems like mm -hmm. somebody's committing a crime, that they committed a crime by being here without papers, by overstaying on their visa, by you know crossing a border. And there's nothing illegal about any of that, yet that's what people in the news, people in regular conversation, even me, sometimes I catch myself saying illegal, but there's nothing actually criminal about it. But it makes people think that people are committing crimes when they're not. Immigration is a civil offense. It's not a criminal offense. When you're undocumented, it is a civil offense, not criminal at all. So now the Biden administration will no longer be using the word illegal. They're going to be using the word undocumented, which is really what individuals are who don't have status here in the United States. And it's all part of Joe Biden's move to be more welcoming to immigrants. Now, according to an email sent yesterday to USCIS officials, Acting Director Tracy Renaud recently signed a memo encouraging the more inclusive language in the agency's outreach efforts, internal documents, and an overall communication with stakeholders, partners, and the general public. Other changes, as I said, they are going to be using undocumented non-citizen, undocumented individual rather than illegal alien, and integration or civic integration instead of assimilation. I never really had a problem with assimilation, but I could see where people do. I had a much bigger problem with the word illegal and the word alien. This will definitely help not only to teach us that, you know, they are also human, but it also makes, you know, immigrants feel more welcome. You know, they, a lot of them are trying to just leave their country for a better life. And for you to be welcome to a whole new country, with people hating you, nobody deserves that, especially innocent people who have not committed any crime. My family, they're all immigrants. For example, I put myself in their shoes. Nobody deserves that. We're all alike. We're human We're beings. We're all alike. We're all, yeah. right. We're all alike, human beings. I'm happy to hear that. Meanwhile, in Atlantic City, which I have not been to in a very long time, when was the last time you were in Atlantic City? For my 30th birthday, it was oh. a surprise trip that my best friends, did, and I had never been there. That was the first, and only time. Well, was that? yeah, was that? Well, yeah. the Donald Trump era in Atlantic City oh, has now officially come to an end. 3,000 sticks of dynamite during this morning's implosion of the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. Front row seats to view the spectacle were sold out on the cheap. Onlookers in cars hoping to witness the symbolic finale of the former president's casino empire were charged $10. 
The implosion came less than a month after Donald Trump left the White House after losing re-election and became the first president in history to be impeached twice. Quite a metaphor, the destruction of the building. There it goes. There we go. Quite, I, I mean, just, you know, I, you know, you, you, mean, you can, you can, you can, you know, be, make your comments, make your hashtags right there. A lot of, a lot of metaphors you could say about Donald Trump's building imploding in Atlantic Listen, City. I, I, might, I might have taken a, a special trip to Atlantic City right. just for that, if I had known. <laughs> yeah, now Trump Plaza was the first of three casinos Trump owned before his gambling business in Atlantic City, which was a struggling city of 38,000 people, went bankrupt, leaving a trail of unpaid contractors and suppliers to detractors, including the Democratic mayor of Atlantic City, Marty Small. Today's demolition was the vivid embodiment of a long-awaited end to Donald Trump's association with Atlantic City. The mayor, in a bid to raise $175,000 for the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City, had attempted to auction off the right to push a button to implode the building, but billionaire and owner of the building, Carl Icahn, who had supported Trump as president, scrapped that plan. An alternative auction for 10 hotel packages, including VIP viewing access, generated about $6,000 in bids, and the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino donated $10,000 to the club. I'm sure Atlantic City is saying good riddance. I, I don't think that they're going to be missing <laughs> anything that has to do with Trump. Yeah. The conservative radio host who for decades was the king of talk radio that shaped the politics of both the Republican Party and the United States of America. He died today after a battle with cancer. He was 70 years old. Limbaugh announced in February 2020 that he had been diagnosed with advanced lung cancer. He continued to host his radio show and his TV show. He was a pioneer on AM talk radio for 32 years. He hosted the Rush Limbaugh Show, a nationally syndicated program with millions of loyal listeners. The Rush Limbaugh Show helped popularize political talk radio format and usher in the generation of conservative infotainment. Limbaugh often discussed conspiracy theories. He generated a lot of controversy for hateful commentary on gender, sexual orientation, and race. He was one of Donald Trump's biggest supporters. He relentlessly attacked President Obama. And for the last few years, he has been peddling this false deep state conspiracy theories, uh, providing cover for Donald Trump as a friend and legitimizing what is basically a falsehood that Donald Trump won the election by a landslide. He was announcing it all the way to the end. He even dismissed the coronavirus as a common cold, said it was nothing, and contended that it was being weaponized by members of the mainstream press just to harm Donald Trump and his reelection chances. Now, listen, I don't, I'm not happy that anybody dies. I really don't wish yo yo anybody to be dead. But this guy, as far as I'm concerned, based on what he was saying and what he was doing, and you could say I'm, I'm being very unempathetic to a man who just passed, but I don't see why the world would miss him. I would just like to say rest in peace to Cicely Tyson. Mm -hmm. She was just uh, finally buried yesterday. Her funeral was right across the street. That's all I have to say. Okay. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, they, that guy, he spewed hate, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, millions of people. and. Right. So many people followed him. Yeah, you know, and believe like it. you said. And I believe wish, it. I don't wish hate about anybody. I, I don't wish death. To That's anybody, right. I don't. But, I don't want anyone to I mean, suffer. I, I but but, no but, but yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is frigid, not only here in New York, but across most of the United States, including the Deep South and Texas. Are you seeing what's going on on the TV? More than two hundred. Um, yeah. Yeah, more than two hundred million. I have family out there. In Texas. Yeah, I yeah. have to call them. I've been calling them for the past like week. Uh huh. It's 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 really bad out there because they're not equipped for this. They're not. They don't. Know? They're not ready for this. It's just as cold yeah. in Texas as in New York, except New York knows how to deal with it. Uh, or maybe it's a little colder in Texas, but I mean it's still frigid everywhere. Uh, but the thing is, New York has you know our play our our pipes are built for it. We right. have trucks that plow. We right. we salt the streets. They don't have any of that. That's correct. Now, mm -hmm. 200 million people, we'll talk about this, why? Yeah. Okay, 200 million people remain under some sort of weather-related alert after a winter storm that blew across most of Midwest and Texas. 
Texas is in single digit temperatures. New York is used to that as well. Snow and sleet on Thursday. New York is used to that as well. A lot of the Northeast and Midwest is used to that. Dallas, however, has never seen temperatures down to zero since the coldest recorded temperature taken in 1949. So this is yeah. the coldest Dallas, Texas has been in 75 years. Mm -hmm. uh, people have lived an entire life and never had to live in zero temperature weather like right. they're doing right now in Dallas. So all the power has been lost. Millions of people have lost power. Some people have it. Centerpoint Energy, which runs the grid in Texas, serves the Houston area specifically, announced yesterday that its outages currently affect 1.27 million people and are going to last for several more days. Now, rolling power blackouts were ordered across Texas yesterday as the winter storm and frigid temperatures gripped the state. The storm, which Governor Greg Abbott declared a statewide disaster Friday, has led to at least 26 deaths, most of them in Texas. Now, the problem with Texas, Yo-Yo, is mm -hmm. that they are unregulated there. So they mm -hmm. have their own statewide power grid. If you, almost all the other states, I, I don't know of any other state that has its own statewide power grid, all the other states are regulated by the federal government to be able to provide power in various weather situations. Texas avoided any federal regulations by building their own power grid. As a result, they are falling flat on their face there because they were not expecting this and there was no regulations for any power company to make contingency plans for people who are in zero degree weather. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. It's they're, they're, they're really going through it out there. I was talking to, because I have uh, my aunts and my sisters out there as well. And luckily, two of them, they, you know, grew up in Kansas City. So, like, they know, you know, certain things that you have to do, like keep the water running just a little bit so your pipes don't burst and, you know, making sure that you keep your bathtub full of water just in case your water gets turned off for the toilet. But like a lot of people there don't know this. So everybody out there is just going crazy. Yeah, but they don't even have, you know, a lot of people don't have warm clothes. A lot of people, right. a lot, you know, you don't have heat. So you don't even have like mm -hmm. very heavy clothes to wear, heavy blankets. People aren't used to this. And then to yeah. have no heat coming into your home. Right. And I think they building. only had they had like a week to two weeks from what my sister said. They had about a week to two weeks of warning, but it's still, you know, you're like, ah, okay. You yeah. know, it's, it's, let, you've let, never, they've never had anything let, like let this. Me, let me, let me, it's, it's and true. let me explain something. You know, it's really great when, you know, guys run for president like a Donald Trump and says, we have too much regulation in America. We're going to cut regulation in America. Businesses need to make money. We don't need these unnecessary regulations. Well, you know what? Yeah, your businesses made money. Some fat cats got rich. Texas has no regulation on their energy, on their power grid. As a result, this is what happens when you have yeah, yeah. a weather situation. When businesses have no regulation, they can do what they want. Right. Causes death, causes yeah. destruction, causes misery. Regulations are put into account because it's supposed to protect people. And your politicians are like, regulations are bad. And you know what happens when you cut regulation? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's certain regulations that are stupid, obviously. Nobody says every regulation is like, you know, a godsend. Okay. Right. But you have to have regulations you know, for, for people to come, I don't get when, when somebody says, we're going to cut all regulations and that way, you know, businesses can make money. Okay, great. Businesses are making money, but does the individual person in Texas have anything to do with the power grid in, in Texas? No, it's a few rich fat cats who are making a lot of money because there's no regulation on the power grid in Texas. The average mm. person in Texas is not making one dime not making a dime because there was no regulation on the power grid in Texas. It's just, you know, rich, rich corporations and rich people who own them. Right. Okay. Yet all these politicians come and they go in, into their campaigns and they're like, you know what? We got to cut regulation. We cut regulation. You're going to be a very happy person. I don't know how that makes anybody happy. Cutting regulations, no government oversight. And this is what happens. Yeah, I agree. Are you following what's happening with our friend Governor Cuomo here in New York? 
Uh, what's happening? Yeah, he had his, you know, moment in the spotlight when everyone was like, you know, loving him and he was making his daily briefings about coronavirus and people were comparing it to Donald Trump's daily briefings when Trump is telling everybody to drink, you know, Drano and put light through your veins or whatever he was doing. Well, he was crowned America's governor. Yes. Last year. Right. Like, that's what they, they was loving him. Well, well, they were, well, you know, now there's an issue with deaths in nursing homes with Governor Cuomo. And apparently mm -hmm. what was happening was when patients were being treated for coronavirus from a nursing home, they were transferred to a hospital. And many times they got transferred after they recovered back to a nursing home, back to the same infected nursing home where they originally mm. left from, and perhaps mm. even bringing coronavirus back into a nursing home. And it was a problem for Governor Cuomo. I'm not exactly sure why that was done, whether that was Cuomo, whether that was the New York State Department of Health. He claims he was following federal mandates. I got to look into it more. I don't know why that was happening. But as right. a result, there was ended up being a lot of what I'm reading, unnecessary deaths, unnecessary deaths. because of this policy. And then as a result of that unnecessary deaths, Governor Cuomo wanted to make sure that his statistics made him look like he was in the best light possible. So when somebody would get sick in a nursing home, they would transport that person to a hospital and then ultimately, sadly, that that elderly person would die in a hospital. And those deaths were not counted as deaths from a nursing home. They were just counted as an additional COVID death in a hospital, thus lowering the number of actual deaths that happened in a nursing home and then making Governor Cuomo presumably look a little better than what the statistics show. So mm -hmm. apparently now all of this has come out. People are calling for Governor Cuomo's head. I'm not sure if lying about statistics about deaths in a nursing home is criminal. You, you hear people saying he's criminal. I'm not sure if lying about statistics, whether somebody died in a nursing home or they died in a hospital is a criminal act. I, I, I'm not sure what criminal statute that would break. It's obviously- I agree it's, it's obvi morally or it, ethically it, wrong. Correct. It's obviously yeah. lying to the public right. about your situation in your particular state. He was absolutely, if this is true, absolutely dishonest and disingenuous about what right. was going on. Perhaps it's criminal if he was not following rules and regulations and they were moving patients back into nursing homes, which caused death purposely or negligently, so, I, that I don't know if that's so what, I, what I happened. Thought, right, I saw he said that uh, his administration should have done a better job with transparency, but didn't apologize. So like if he's blaming his administration, would that be criminal to him or the administration? That's like, just disingenuous to other people which is why, right. and by the way, this all came out because this, you know, in politics, it's, you know, when, when the, you know, the SHIT hits the fan, everyone wants to save their ASS. So Melissa DeRosa, who was Governor Cuomo's top aide, because Governor Cuomo is, you know, saying, well, my administration did this, my administration did that. And he is, he's trying to blame everybody. So Melissa DeRosa says, I'm not going to be the fall woman. So mm. she started telling Democratic lawmakers that the administration delayed sharing the death toll information with the Democratic senators, state senators and assemblymen because Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, was worried that the information would be used against us, us being the Cuomo administration in a Justice Department investigation. So perhaps the Justice Department was going to investigate. Perhaps that is a crime that to, if there is an ongoing investigation and the Justice Department asks for information about that investigation, and then they give false, false uh, testimony or perhaps false information to a Justice Department investigation, perhaps that could be a crime then. The actual mm. providing of false information, false documentation. That's what I 
If that right. could that could be the crime. We don't know. We don't know, right. but I am extraordinarily disappointed. When I, when I, I, I am too because I yeah. liked him. Yeah, but I don't know if I could like him anymore after all of this, you know. And a lot of people right. can't. I know, but we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. Maybe he did nothing yeah. wrong. Maybe he did. It's all allegations right now, so we'll see what happens. All right. And well, and and, fi and finally, according to statistics from the John Hopkins University, there's now more than 109 million coronavirus cases worldwide in the United States. 27 and a half million people have been diagnosed with COVID. Uh, President Biden set a new deadline. He said at the end of July, the United States is going to have enough COVID vaccine doses to vaccinate everybody, including you, Yo-Yo, if you want one. He also yes. said the nation will be back to normal by Christmas. Oh. Christmas. And you know, and you want to know what I have to say? What? Christmas can't come fast enough. Man. Christmas can't telling? come fast enough. Who you telling? This part, this is about to be the best Christmas ever. It's hump day. <laughs> a Royal Navy officer has been filming. Uh, of course, this is in the UK. Right. A Royal Navy officer has been filming online, quote, porn to order with her lover from inside a secret British nuclear submarine base. What? They've been doing, making porn movies at night when everybody else is sleeping at the submarine base. Lieutenant okay. Claire Jenkins, she's known by her fans on OnlyFans as Callie Taylor, has posted explicit material from inside the Fastlane Nuclear Submarine Headquarters at Her Majesty's Naval Base in Scotland. Many of the X-rated online clips include the 29-year-old naval lover. Is that what you would be, a naval lover? Yes, you're a lover of a woman in the Navy. Um, okay, right. now I understand what naval lover meant. I was like, I'm like a new term. What is a naval lover? I Now I know. <laughs> okay, and by the way, no pun intended, but her lover is leading seaman <laughs> Liam, Liam Doddington. <laughs> Her naval what? lover is leading seaman. Is that's his? That's his title. Uh, apropos, yo yo. Apropos, but that's his title on the submarine. Leading, leading seaman. <laughs> Liam Doddington. Pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. A a, a a navy source said the commanders can't believe this. There could be all kinds of security risks. Confronted by her bosses, bosses, Jenkins reportedly confessed, but continued to post more X-rated content over the weekend, including a video with the with the caption, he really used me, referring to the leading seaman, Liam Donington. So you can't get, like, let go from that? Isn't that, like, against... Uh, we don't know. We don't know what happened to her. Uh, but she is, she works on a submarine with this leading seaman, <laughs> Liam Doddington. I love saying that for some reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's some I mean, submarine. Yeah. All right. I, you know, it sounds like a silly movie to me more than anything. You know, like bubbling people on a submarine decide to make like homemade porn movies, right? I mean, it's just uh, Zach and Mary make a porno. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, By the way, very funny that. movie. That was a funny movie. That's a, actually yeah. a great movie. It's but a they funny make movie. a porno at, like a coffee shop. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. But this is now inside a submarine. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. In two years, some producer in Hollywood makes a movie about this now, right? There you go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a man who sued his parents. We we talked about this about a year and a half ago. The lawsuit's finally over. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this story, but what a man happened? sued his parents for throwing out his porn collection. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Well, he won I... his lawsuit in Western Michigan and can he now, won. yeah, can now seek money from his parents. U.S. District Judge Paul Maloney ruled in favor of David Working, who said his parents had no right to throw out his pornos. He lived at their Grand Haven home for 10 months after divorce before moving to Muncie, Indiana. Working said the boxes of films and magazines were worth an estimated $29,000. Oh. Um, uh, the judge said there's no question that the destroyed property was David's property. Defendants repeatedly admitted 
that they destroyed the property. Now, the parents said they had a right to act as his landlord, but Maloney pointed out the defendants do not cite to any statute of case law to uh, support their assertion that landlords can destroy property, including pornos. $29,000 worth, though? Yes. It wasn't... You're a weirdo. Yeah, it's weird. $29,000. Now, uh, Working said it wasn't so much the money. He just liked the pornos. Now, he didn't say that, but I I, I don't know why he would say that. <laughs> I'm about to say... Yeah, he didn't I say mean, that. Like, there's free porn online. Yeah, like, come on, man. Like just being petty. Like, yeah. towards your parents, too? Yeah, yeah. You that could... just they got a bad... Like, they had a bad argument. They have bad... Uh, you know, I, I can't get with anybody who has bad relationships with their parents. Yeah, I mean, know? I can totally see what happened, you know? The mom walked in on him, and, and she's like, David! I don't believe it! What are you doing? How Put old is this Put your thing? pants up and stop watching those pornos! How old is this man? He's a man. And the judge gave it to him? That's yeah, loud. Yeah. That and belong on like a Judge Judy or like Judge Maybelline. Like that should be on like a TV that, uh, that's a, courtroom. Yeah, style. that's another that's an, that's another that's another movie right there. And now speaking of movies that were made from porn stories, you know, made famous from the People versus Larry Flint, porn publisher Larry Flint, he died, but he was sent off with a bang. Larry Flint's Las Vegas Hustlers Club will honor its founder with a sexy celebration of life party, complete with performances by wow. pole dancers, drinks, and an on-stage memorial next weekend. The strip club remembrance ceremony is reportedly planned to mirror the lifestyle of the porn peddler turned First Amendment champion who died of heart failure last week at his Los Angeles home at the age of 78. Uh, Flint fought several high-profile legal battles, including... Uh, involving the First Amendment and unsuccessfully ran for public office. He was paralyzed from the waist down when he got shot in a 1978 Damn. assassination attempt by serial killer Joseph Paul Franklin. The uh, club's uh, dance group, Sexy After Dark, a barely clad burlesque troupe known for its pole acrobats and onstage sexuality, according to the Hustler Club website. What is quite ironic about him being shot and he was paralyzed from the waist down. He couldn't, he couldn't perform any sexual activity yet. He was oh. yet because he was in a wheelchair yet. He was the porn king for the late seventies and into the eighties. Listen, I'm here for a great send off. Mm -hmm. That's, that, I think that's, that, that's a perfect send off for him. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.